there's only two particular tools for automation in QuickBooks Desktop. One of them is going to be memorized transactions. And I, I'm going to go through it briefly because I think most people know about memorized transactions pretty well. So I'll go through it briefly. And then I'm going to go through scheduling reports, which is a really uh, important new tool added in QuickBooks Desktop 2017 on automating reports. So let me start with memorized transactions. And I'm going to click on the list menu and click on memorized transaction list. So in the memorized transaction list, that will give you a list of all the active transactions that are set up for automation. The way you know is there's a little checkbox here that says auto. So anything that says auto here, that means that QuickBooks is scheduled to automatically create the transaction for you. And they basically ask you when you first open QuickBooks, would you like to accept the, um, the automatic transactions or not? I still call it automation, even though it, it still requires one last button, just because it doesn't require additional action is sort of proactive when you first uh, open QuickBooks. Now you can disable any active transactions uh, set up for automation by just right click on them and going into edit and then moving them from automate transaction entry uh, to don't remind me or to add to my reminders list. So as, so as long as it's not sitting there on the automate option, these are not scheduled for automation. Okay, now, so how do you create memorized transactions on the first place? Well, that's actually a pretty simple uh, concept. What you do is you create uh, one sample of that transaction first. Um, and again, this could work for the invoice example that we did, uh, but you would have to go into each one, memorize each one, and you would have this humongous memorized transaction list, which will make things a little bit more complicated. Uh, so that's where batching could be uh, useful. Anyway, um, so I'm going to create a bill for my landlord and we'll go ahead and make that uh, let's say 3750 and I pick I'll pick the date the typical date you know of the transaction reference number pretty much put that blank uh, because um, you're not gonna know the invoice number until you actually get the invoice so you can leave that blank or you can put something like need invoice number right you, you could do that as well uh, that way, let, letting you know that the transaction was created automatically and until somebody physically goes into the bill and puts the actual invoice number, it hasn't been fully verified. This is just an example. You could you could leave it blank if you wanted to. The other thing I like to do, and this is uh, up to you, what I like to do is in the memo section, I like to put uh, a memo called hashtag review. And this is a part of a much deeper strategy, which has to do with um, tagging transactions so you can pull them on reports. And I'll cover that briefly as well. But the reason why I do that is because sometimes I create transactions that are automated, but I still want a mechanism for someone to go in there and review them before taking them at face value. So although rent is pretty self-explanatory, I don't think it requires a whole lot of additional kind of thought, you know, whether or not your rent should be in your QuickBooks or not. But, you know, for other types of bills or other types of memorized transactions that are being created automatically, I think it's good for that tag to be there just so it, so it can show up in a report and I'll show you um, how that works briefly. So once I create uh, the bill, I actually don't have to save it. I'm not on the obligation to save it. Um, I'm just creating basically all the moving parts that I want to see on that transaction. And then I'm going to click control, control M on the keyboard, M for memorize. I could also just click on the memorize button and I'll have to uh, memorize the, the well, no pun intended, remember the, the keyboard uh, shortcut. So I'm going to go ahead and click on memorize. And that's going to ask me, in this case, I already had one memorized for this particular vendor. That's why the first question popped up, but I'm ignoring that for a second. And then I can call this um, monthly rent. Okay. And then I like to put, so if I don't put the vendor's name on the transaction, I like to put the custom, the vendor's name or the or the vendor's name in parentheses. Okay, so um, it's just a habit of mine that I'll you know uh, if I'm gonna put the the explanation of what it is as the name and um, in the, the vendor's name in parentheses, it just makes it easier to read when I look at the memorized report uh, list. And then I'm gonna click on automate transaction entry, and that this again this is the only thing that you can automate in QuickBooks. How often you can say, well, you can pick any of these. I can say monthly. And then on the next date, let's say I wanted to start 
today or next month or whatever, I'll pick the next scheduled date for automatic entry. And by the way, you could also do this retroactively. So if you if you wanted to create, you know, let's say the last 12 months worth of monthly insurance bills, you could take this back a whole year and it will enter them for you. Um, so that's another really important piece. This is not only for future automation. This could also be for uh, back data that I want to enter. Anyway, so I'm going to pick the first of the month. Then under number remaining, if I leave it blank, it's going to be forever. It's never going to stop until I manually stop it. If I put a limit there, if I put 12, then after the 12 invoices, it will, sorry, after the 12 bills, none of them will be created again. That's it. So it's up to 12. So this is really good for like short term contracts for maybe uh, depreciation. You can automate depreciation through here and you can do five years worth, something like that by putting number remaining five years if you're doing annually or, you know, number remaining 60 if you're doing it monthly, whatever it happens to be. And then days in advance to enter basically means how many days before the transaction date would you like us to create a future dated transaction? In other words, if I date this January 1st, 2017, and today is December 1st, 2016, so that's 30 days from now, and I put 30 days in advance, basically today or tomorrow, that transaction will be entered with a future date on it, okay? Uh, so that's a really important piece. Now, if you want to create transactions in the future, the maximum amount of days you can put there is 999, which is about two and a half years, two and three quarters of a year. So you can only automate uh, QuickBooks to automatically enter transactions in the future. It doesn't matter how often it is, uh, no more than 999 days in advance. Why is that? That's just because it's a limitation that put that in the box. So that's only if you're memorizing transactions that are going to have future dates on it. Okay. So then that's basically, again, how many days before the transaction date would you like that to appear in QuickBooks, even though it has a future date att attached to it. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And then I'm going to close it. I don't have to save it. So if I memorize it, I don't have to save it. However, I am going to save it to show you to show you something real quick. So going back to the reason why I add, added the hashtag re review on it, and it's a particular specific reason for that, it's because I would like for automated transactions to be for for be transactions that I can pull on a report. Um, that way I want to sort of verify them because what happens with automation, you know, it's just more prone for errors. So I'm going to go into the file menu and click on find and then click on the advanced filter and then go down to memo. And then I'm going to put there the same wording that I put on that transaction that I scheduled to be memorized or to be automatically created. So I'm just doing a search, a memo search, and then I'm going to click on find and that's going to show me every transaction that, that has that, that review in there. And the reason why I put the hashtag in it is because uh, normally if I use the word review inside of an invoice, for example, uh, like exactly uh, how it, it, it could be like even accounting firm could put, you know, review last month or something. I don't want the word review that I'm using it for the purpose of um, looking at specific transactions. I don't want that to be searched in the description of an invoice. So when I put the hashtag in there letting me know that that's an intentional tag that I want to use exclusively for a report. So I'm going to go ahead and click on report. And then I basically have a report that I can memorize and I can call this my hashtag review and I can put in parentheses automatically entered transactions, whatever it happens to be. And then uh, I basically have a report for everything that was automatically entered. And then that gives me one more opportunity to, uh, to review it, revise it, check that it's okay, make sure it's not a duplicate. And then once I go to it and I realize that it, the transaction is okay, it doesn't need to be reviewed anymore. I just basically remove the tag from the memo, hit save and close, and then go back to that report. It doesn't show up there anymore. So that's an important, as I'm kind of teaching you a little bit beyond just creating the transactions, you kind of think about the consequences of a memorized uh, transaction. Now, the last piece here I'll show you is uh, scheduled reports. Scheduled reports, it's here on the reports uh, menu, scheduled reports, and then I'm going to click on schedule uh, report setup. And then basically, uh, in a nutshell, and you have to be 
on uh, on single user, and also uh, you have to have your uh, email connected because it's, this is all done through email. So it asked me for my Gmail password because it's going to send this all through Gmail. Um, and the way schedule reports work in a nutshell is any reports that are sitting on your memorized report list. So the perfect example is the one we just did, the review report. So if I wanted my client's QuickBooks file to email me daily transactions that are on the review report, these are things that my client proactively tagged review, or maybe we did it through the automation feature, whatever it happens to be. Um, then I can click on next and I can basically schedule this report to be emailed to me, let's say at three o'clock in the morning or six o'clock in the morning every single day. And we'll call this review report for accountant. And then we click on next. And then two, I'll put the email of whoever's supposed to be getting that report. So I'll put my email there. And then I can password protect the report, something I strongly recommend uh, because you know you are sending financial information from QuickBooks automatically without any um, you know uh, person you know double checking what they're doing. So you want to password protect it. You mm -hmm. click on schedule, and then basically um, uh, QuickBooks will schedule it. And then there's a piece of software that runs alongside of QuickBooks that will lo log into your file, pull the report, and email it automatically. So those are the two areas, two possible areas where you can do any sort of automation in QuickBooks uh, desktop. Um, uh, somebody says, can you batch enter sales receipts? The answer is no. There's no built-in tool to batch enter sales receipts. You would need a third-party tool for that. But the, somebody was asking me about uh, memorized transaction lists. So uh, memorized transaction lists can be grouped and uh, grouping could be useful um, because maybe I want to group them into the monthlies, the quarterlies, the weeklies, or something like that. So that's in, in the list menu, Memorize Transaction List. Down here it says Memorize Transaction, and then it says New Group. So I can create a group, and I can call these uh, Monthly. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and go to Automate Transaction. Actually, let me do OK, and then where's my new group? And then what I can do is I can grab any of the ones that I want to put into monthly and I can click and drag to the right like this. So as long as it's under it, I can click and drag to the right or I can click and drag down, make it directly under it, click, drag to the right. And that's how you can quickly put them into the group. Now, why would, the, why would it be useful for the group? The purpose of the group is that, that I can actually right click on the group and I can change all the attributes of the group ones as a whole. So if I go to don't remind me and hit OK, all of my memorized transactions under that group get paused. If I actually right click on it and go to edit and I want to put it back into automate the transaction entry monthly or whatever it happens to be and hit OK, all of those transactions inside the group get changed. So the purpose of the group is for me to pause it or resume it. Uh, whenever I want as a whole. That way I don't have to go one by one. And also you only want to put in groups the ones that that, that get repeated on the same uh, in the same uh, grouping. 